a lot of things that are associated with General John Hunt Morgan. He was probably one of the most famous cavalrymen in the Civil War and certainly in Kentucky. He was a big legend. So we have a lot of his artifacts that we were able to collect through the years. And one of the most wonderful artifacts, uh, especially associated with the Battle of Perryville, you know, when Morgan came in in 62, he immediately let the Confederate Army leaders know back down south that, hey, Kentucky's ready to come into the Confederacy. So if you will just send your men up here, we'll get all kinds of men to come into the Confederacy. Well, that didn't happen. They only got nine regiments of cavalry. But during that time, he put these things all over Lexington and central Kentucky. Oh, and it basically, an it's an actual one. It basically oh, cool. says, uh, hey, come join us. We know that you don't want those terrible tyrant Federalists in your neighborhood. So if you come and join the Confederate Army, uh, great things await you. He didn't get a whole lot of recruits. He did get nine regiments wow. of cavalry, and one of them, uh, the 6th Kentucky Cavalry, some of those guys, Company A, came out of Bull in Lincoln County, so you're right in their neck of the woods where wow. they came from. It has so. been decided that Kentucky must be freed from the detested northern yoke. The tyrants of it. So, And a lot of this was done on just anything they could print. They put some of it on uh, newspaper, some of it on wallpaper. It was just, he had a printer with him. He had a printer that came in with him because, you know, propaganda is a big deal, right? It always sure. has been throughout the years. So he had a printer that was within the cavalry, so he had him print out all of this different stuff. And he did this on several of the raids in Kentucky. But So they're getting into Lexington, uh, and they have these printed. But you have to have that skill, right, to set that print and roll the printer. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had that available to him, and he used it, you know, because sure. propaganda is good stuff. Morgan was really a prominent guy in Lexington before the war, and his family was super prominent. And they were um, tied in with the Hunts, and F.K. Hunt was mayor of Lexington in 1850. And during that time, he presented John Hunt Morgan with this Adams and Dean revolver. And that's super sweet. You can see where he uh, writes on there to J.H. Morgan during the time that, oh, wow. that Morgan was in the Lexington Rifles. And you can see it's, it's ruby encrusted you know, because it's super fancy. Did he pack that during the war? Nah, probably not. But still, it came down through the family, and wow, it's it's so it's a very unique pistol. So here, have, yeah, touch yeah, it. yeah, touch it. That wow. is so cool. I think it's a 32 caliber. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. You know, the Morgans were very well-to-do. They lived right off Gratz yeah. Park. And the Lexington Rifles was one of the premier militias mm -hmm. in the United States, and yep. Morgan was in charge of that with Simon Bolivar Buckner. Um, so, you know, he had this pistol made to him. However, things did not go good for John Hunt Morgan on some of his raids in Kentucky. And, um, you know, in the 63 raid, they all got captured and sent to prison. Mm -hmm. Well, at the Camp Chase prison, one of his officers, J.H. McCombs, went and had this little book on him, and he had all of these different officers sign it from Morgan's Cavalry, Force Cavalry, the Army of Northern Virginia. So all of these Confederate prisoners signed this, this really dainty little autograph book wow. with different sayings in it. So that's one that's of the very cool things that we have, really uh, you know, and it came out of Camp Chase out of Columbus, Ohio. So that's oh, a, man. you know, paper is a rare thing and to have that's that a, with us. And this quality too. It's yeah, so it's, cool. it's a really sweet quality. And they all put little quippets in there about, you know, their time and stuff. But there's a lot of Confederate officers that signed that. I've actually seen a couple of these. There's a couple in the Historical Society's collection. One of them was a uh, book of dolls that they actually used. This one's just plain paper, but they, I think they probably used just about anything they could get a hold of for that signatures. So, oh, wow. isn't that cool? That is really cool. Yeah. And of course we have this Tiffany sword, beautiful sword. Uh, it is an 1840 model Dragoon sword. He probably did carry this at some point during the war. Um, certainly he didn't have it with him in, you know, when, he, when he was in Tennessee at the very last. But um, this is a pretty cool sword. Go yeah. ahead, Steve. It's well balanced. Maybe this was in Midway. It could have been, or Cynthia. I live right you know? outside Midway. Yeah, yeah, it could have been Cynthia. So that is one of, um, one of the unique things that we have. It's an 1840 model Dragoon. It's a, it's a German-made sword, which a lot of them were, but they imported them into the States, and then you could buy them. And then Tiffany did this one. Um, but I imagine what they did is they bought it in Germany and then brought it over and put the Tiffany stamps and did the basket and all the wrapping and stuff on it. Most all those blades come out of Germany. Mm. Uh, solid and steel, you know, solid in Germany is still a big thing for that, that particular production. Right. So, uh, you know, that's the 1840 wrist breaker right there. Wow. That's so, and I think probably one of the saddest artifacts that we have in our collection is this Model 2 
uh, Smith & Wesson revolver. This was um, belonged to Lieutenant Edward Pinnock. Um, he was in the 10th Kentucky Company G. And the 10th Kentucky was here at Perryville, although they weren't really heavily engaged. But they did go on to fight at Chickamauga and all through Sherman's March and, and down into the Deep South. Pinnock, um, and we don't really know what happened to Pinnock, but something happened at Chickamauga and he was wounded badly. He ended up in the Veteran Reserve Corps and then after the war, um, he brought this pistol home with him and he tried to kill himself several mm. times with it. And um, his wife took the pistol, wrapped it in a piece of cloth, and then sealed it up in the chimney where it stayed for about 125 years. The family <sighs> tore it down. They tore the house down and then they found this pistol. You know, they'd wow. always heard this story, but here's the pistol. And it's in magnificent it's shape. It's in great yeah. shape. And who, the reason being, she wrapped it in a baby diaper or what I guess would have been right, a baby absorbed. diaper. And, and kept it. Now, we also have um, the holster to it, but I don't bring it out too often because, no, you no, know, we don't so. want that leather delicate. But, you know, that, that pistol probably went from Perryville to Georgia with him. Uh, and it's such a sad statement about war, what the real cost of combat is on the individual person, that something happened that badly to him that he just you know, he couldn't deal with it. So. Right. We hear so much about it today, but yeah. it, it was just as prominent was, then. Yeah, of course it was. But it was, you know. Yeah. yeah. And this, you know, that pistol, it's it's got a tragic story, but it's a beautiful Smith & Wesson. It's, I mean, it's a beautiful It's incredible pistol. that it was in a chimney that long. Yeah, it was. And a good chimney. I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's still blue. <laughs> when, when I looked at it, I'm like, that that looks brand new. But yeah, we that's ran the incredible. serial numbers. Like, it's it's a Just legit small. deal. Yeah. It's well balanced, beautiful pistol. Yeah. So without these artifacts connecting those stories, um, the land is wonderful. It's a beautiful thing, but you have to have those artifacts being able to tell you who these people are and what they suffered through. This in particular, the Camp Chase prison was a god awful place. Thousands of men died there, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And here you have this this piece of paper that came down 100 and what 56 years now, and it's got their names and their stories in it. So that really connects you to that time. Um, to me, that's that's what the artifacts. I agree. Mean. I, I I love the I love the personal. Yeah, the personal. You know, I, I I love this. I love all of it. But sure. But the, it's the it's the canteen and it's right, the backpack right. and or the little the, little piece of paper this guy's carrying with him in prison. Exactly that you know. that, that has even for me it's much yeah. more of an individual. Well, it makes some people you know. right. Well, yeah, I mean there were there were you know thousands of of men in units that had numbers and states, but they right, were right. all individuals. I think of that all the time when I'm when I'm here. I think of what it was like as an individual, not right. as a group of people right, right, right. going up this hill or facing those guns there. Sure. You know, 